I've been following this young man. <laughs> and I say that uh, jokingly. I've been following this young man for the better part of my life. Um, being born and raised in New York and having this man who is synonymous with New York City and everything to do with some of the most high profile cases uh, that the country's ever seen. Please welcome world renowned American physician. Board certified pathologist, forensic pathologist, Dr. Michael Barton. Dr. Thank Barton, welcome. Thank you, Sean. Good to talk to you. Oh, it's great to talk to you. I, I actually, I've been seeing you for so much of my life. I feel like I know you. <laughs> You're such a familiar face to me. Well, I've been around and I've been, uh, I was born in the Bronx, raised in Brooklyn live in Manhattan, so I've been all over the world, <laughs> all over the city. <laughs> all over the city, but everybody knows you. Okay, um, Dr. Barton, I got to ask you, you're, you're a world-renowned forensic pathologist. Have you always been fascinated with death? Uh, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, Grow, I grew, growing up and growing up in, uh, in Brooklyn, in, in, in Fort Greene Projects in Brooklyn, um, uh, my mother always instilled in me that I should be a doctor. For whatever reason, she felt I should be a doctor. So I grew up with the idea of wanting to be a doctor to help living people, to take care of living people. And in those days, it was, Doctors used to make house calls. So when I was a kid and I had something uh, 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 wrong with me, uh, flu or, or something, a doctor would come to the house to, and and uh, check me out, and was very nice. And I was very impressed with that the the doctor. And um, as I grew up, I wanted to be a doctor, but I wanted to be a doctor to to do what normally what doctors do is treat living patients. Uh, it wasn't until I got into medical school that I became uh, interested in, death, in dead people. And that was just because I went, to, born in New York, went to City College, went to NYU Medical School, and at NYU Medical School at that time, uh, the autopsy room was in Bellevue Hospital. Uh, NYU was uh, in Bellevue, and and the morgue, the morgue um, was in the basement. And uh, in those days, we used to look at bodies and do dissections, anatomy uh, of. Uh, uh, people who had died and then were preserved in formaldehyde. And downstairs in the lobby, in, in the basement, was the medical, uh, where the Bellevue Hospital autopsy room was, was the medical examiner's office. And I used to go down there to see, uh, I went down there to, to see a, 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 a patient who died and was fascinated with the autopsies that were done down there. And that's what really got me interested in, uh, in, 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 how much can we learn from dead bodies? Wow. Uh, you know, we, we think back to uh, ancient Egypt, if you will, and they have these well-preserved mummies. Is that the earliest uh, that they were practicing forensic pathology, or has this practice of working on dead people been done since the beginning of time? I, I, I think uh, there's always been uh, religious and cultural interests in, in dead people, so that initially it was just after somebody died, especially a well-known person in the uh, community, 5,000 years ago, there might be special burial rites, and the Egyptians, are the ones we've gotten the most information about, had uh, had special uh, 
uh, embalming. They'd embalm bodies of the uh, pharaohs and all. Uh, and those pharaohs and all are still in pretty good c condition. Correct. I remember going down. I had to visit when I visited uh, 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 Egypt many, many years ago. And the museum, uh, the, the uh, main museum there, could see m mummies that had smallpox. And you can see the uh, smallpox lesions on the skin of mummies that were uh, uh, died 3,000, uh, 4,000 years ago. It was, they, they were very good in how to bury uh, people. Autopsies are more recent. Uh, the, the ability to learn from dead people uh, really developed in the 18, hundreds, 1850s, where autopsies began uh, seriously in, um, uh, in uh, uh, Berlin, Germany had uh, the, the uh, earliest real top uh, developed pathology was the, uh, and the ability to learn a great deal from the dead body. But uh, cultures, all cultures have been fascinated with the dead and had various rights, how to bury them, uh, how to preserve them, and it was just learning from them was really from the 19th century. Okay, um, taking this back, and I, I want to keep it uh, back in the early days of, of Egypt, if you will, because you spoke about that. You said that they were embalming the bodies back then, as we know. Are, are they using the same types of embalming fluids that we use Currently, or because obviously those bodies are relatively well preserved. Yeah, there are many well preserved bodies. They, they no, they used different kinds of uh, 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 plant uh, extracts, and um, uh, more. It, by the nineteenth century, uh, formaldehyde began to be used for bodies, and 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 that's what we still use uh, largely. Okay formaldehyde in various concentrations to, pre to preserve bodies. 